It's a very grand title, How Does Colour Vision Work? And I can imagine many of my colleagues rolling their eyes. I think I can answer this in a 10 minute YouTube video. All I really want to do is push back against the idea that I've heard that we see in terms of red, green and blue. So most of us have trichromatic vision. That is, our colour vision is underpinned by three types of light sensitive cells in the eye called cones. And these cells have quite broadband sensitivity to wavelength, as you can see here. We sometimes refer to them as long wavelength, medium wavelength and short wavelength sensitive cones. But even that's somewhat misleading. The long wavelength cone class, the one on the right here, the L cones, for example, well, they have sensitivity to from under 450 nanometers to over 700 nanometers. These cones are not just responding to red, green and blue light, respectively. They're all pretty much responding almost across the whole spectrum. And even if we look at the peak sensitivity of the L cones, for example. This is about 565 nanometers. That's in the green yellow region. So calling the L cone class a red cone is really far from what reality is. In fact, I've come to think that even coloring these curves red, green and blue, as is being done in this example, is a really bad idea. It's much better to show them as black lines, like here. And I've been guilty of using red, green and blue lines myself in many of my presentations, papers and books. But it's not a good idea. There are many, many misunderstandings about colour and colour vision. One misconception that I often hear about colour vision is that we have red, green and blue cones. Sometimes people write that the cones respond to red, green and blue wavelengths, which is not right. And sometimes people say that the human visual system sees in terms of red, green and blue. And I think here people have this idea that the eyes produce three signals, red, green and blue. And this generates other colours in a process akin to additive colour mixing when nothing like that is actually happening in the visual system. So the first thing I want to say is that we, we don't have red, green and blue cones. We don't see the world in red, green and blue. And the cones have got quite broad spectral sensitivity to wavelengths. In fact, as you can see, we're sensitive to all of the wavelengths in the visible spectrum. When we talk about sensitivity, spectral sensitivity, one way to think about what this means is that these curves represent the probability that a photon at each wavelength would be absorbed by the cone pigments. So where the curve is high, it means there's a high probability that a photon of that wavelength would be absorbed. And if you saw my last video about how dyes absorb light, it's exactly the same process here. Photons are absorbed by the visual pigments, which results in an electronic transition. Now, the other thing to talk about is what is called the principle of univariance. This was introduced by someone called William Rushton in 1972. Now what Rushton wrote in his 1972 paper was, the output of a receptor depends upon its quantum catch, but not upon which quanta are caught. But I appreciate that this might not mean much to you. So let's unpack it because I think it's possibly the most important thing I ever learned about color vision. What it means is that if we take this cone class, for example, 
the signal sent to the brain will be the same whether it is responding to one unit of light at this wavelength, one unit of light at this wavelength, or one unit of light at each of these two wavelengths at the same time. Not only that, but based on the response of this cone, the brain would not be able to discriminate between any of these three signals. In other words, if we only had one type of cone, we really would have black and white vision. Now, even though the cone is more sensitive to some wavelengths than others, it cannot tell whether it's responding to a single wavelength or a combination of wavelengths. So in that case, how do we see the spectrum? Well, the, the understanding this might help to clarify things. We see colour based on the relative response of our three cone types. That means that we need at least two types of cones in order to see colour. We, we have to have two in order to make a comparison. We have three, of course. So if we consider each individual wavelength of light, each wavelength of light generates a unique ratio of cone responses. So short wavelength light activates the S cone strongly and the L and M cones much more weakly. And as we increase the wavelength to longer wavelengths, the ratio of responses changes until we have long wavelength light, which activates the L cone strongly, the M cone a bit less strongly, and the S cone barely at all. The key here is that each wavelength generates a unique ratio or pattern of cone responses. So even though we don't have wavelength detectors, we have these three classes of broadband cells, we can tell each wavelength of light apart by its unique signature of cone responses. But as soon as we have more than one light present, more than one wavelength, the responses are no longer unique. So a combination of red and green light, for example, can generate the exact same cone responses as a certain amount of single wavelength yellow light. Our visual systems are literally incapable of distinguishing between these two stimuli. And this is a very nice explanation of why it's possible to generate light that looks yellow from an additive combination of red and green light. In fact, many textbooks um, show the, this additive diagram and say that you can make yellow from red and green very few explain why this happens and the reason is because of the principle of univariance. It's interesting to think about the additive mixture of red and green light producing yellow. But for me, the yellow that we experience when we see single wavelength light as say 580 nanometers is no more or less real than the yellow that we experience when we see an additive mixture of light at say 520 and 700 nanometers. In both cases, the yellows produced by the brain in response to signals received from the retina in the eye. As Isaac Newton said, the rays are not colored. Hope you found that interesting. Um, Speak to you next time.